Hey everybody, it's another Thursday and Geeks of the Week. As it's already been mentioned, I hope you guys enjoy April Fool's Week. I was very nervous about mine. I think I did okay. As long as I didn't suck, I'm pleased with myself. So real quick, I'm going to talk to the other geeks. Steph, the Avengers box set looked like it was worth the freaking wait. It looks so pretty, I want it. Power, your core costume is amazing. And the video of the cosplayers playing around in the playground makes me want to go do that. But if it was just by myself, I think I would get some stranger looks and you guys probably did. Ludico, wish your mom a happy birthday for me because she seems like an awesome lady and tell her to adopt me because you guys get cool socks and concerts and all that other awesome stuff. Ludico, I did not appreciate you throwing around your perfect relationship you have with Nikki. We get it. It's the stuff of fairy tales. And Nikki, we might as well add acting to your list of talents. And we get it. It's enough. You're super talented. You're good at everything. Stop it. Now on to the business of the day. Do you have 40 minutes to kill? Well, at WonderCon, they had a panel of the psychology of Star Trek versus Star Wars. The whole video is up. I'll be posting a link below. I watched it. It's really cool. It's a panel I really would have loved to have been a part of because I'm a fan of both franchises. But I do lean towards Trekkie. So if you want to see it, check out the link. If you want to see my own kind of version of Trek vs. Wars, I did in the video a while back. I'll post a link to that too. This Sunday I was doing what I usually do, and that's watch the Game of Thrones without blinking or breathing. Another great episode, by the way. And I noticed something missing. Something didn't appear, and that's the Iron Throne. A chair I wish to sit upon. Even if it does look uncomfortable. But then that got me thinking, what are other great geeky chairs? So here are my top three geeky chairs of all time. And number three, Professor X wheelchair, specifically the 90s hover chair. It was built by Forge using Shi'ar technology. It had all these cool extras he could command Cerebro and the Blackbird from it. It's still the first chair I remember seeing him in. You might remember it from the first X-Men animated series. It's still by far the coolest and my favorite of his wheelchairs. And number two, the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. It's the seat of the king. It means you're the ruler of all seven kingdoms. It was designed by Aegon Targaryen, the first ruler of Westeros, and it was built using the swords surrendered by his enemies. It is a chair that demands respect. It is badass looking. In fact, that's what I think the series is about. Nobody really wants to be king. They want that chair. If I had thousands of dollars, I would probably buy the life-size replica. Because, you know, I'm a fool like that. And then number one, the captain's chair from the Enterprise from the first Star Trek series. It was a simple design chair, nothing fancy about it, because if you remember, they had a shoestring budget. So the chair in the movies and other TV shows were fancier, better looking, more leathery, and just looked more comfortable. But to me, my favorite will always be that block looking thing from the first series. To sit on that means you're the captain of the best, most prestigious ship in all science fiction, and nothing can top that. And with all that said, my chair feels very inadequate now. I mean, can't do anything. Oh, well, it rolls, and I have a troll in it, but that's about it. Point is, I need a new chair. If you didn't know, Superman's my favorite hero of all time. And this July, I am planning a Superman theme video to coincide with the release of the movie. One of the things I'm going to do is tell you some of my favorite arcs, but I have to review this one now for two reasons. One, who knows if I'll be around in July, and two, the trade for this came out years ago, but they sold out, then it became difficult to get, they jacked up the price, but they recently released a second printing, so you can get it now at a reasonable price. So without further ado, here's my review. Superman's Secret Identity, written by Kurt Busiek and Arbor Stewart Monin. And this story is set in the real world where superpowers only exist in comics. It follows a teen from Kansas with the name of Clark Kent, who's not a fan of Superman because all his life he's gotten teased about it because of his name. Much like I have with the name Mario, I always get asked, where's Luigi? So one day Clark wakes up with the powers of Superman, and he has to deal with this huge responsibility. Much like I did when I woke up with the powers of Super Mario. Bum, 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 ba da da dum, boop, ba da da dum, bum, 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 ba da da dum, ba da ba dum, boop, ba da. The trade covers all of Clark's life and it's self contained, so you don't have to know years of continuity, you can just pick it up and read. It's touching, it's captivating, it's really cool because it offers a real world perspective of someone getting these powers. Clark's journey is an interesting one to me because he's not the last son of Krypton, he's just this kid who got these powers and now has to deal with them. The only similarity he has to the character from the comic is he was raised by good parents. 
The artwork is gorgeous. The coloring has a very watercolor feel to it. It's one of the best Superman stories of all time. I definitely recommend you guys pick up the trade. I don't think it will sell out anytime soon, but do yourself a favor and pick it up when you can. I rate it 5 out of 5. What's that? You want to hear me talk about more comics? Well, here are the comic reviews! <laughs> this week I'm reviewing Age of Ultron issue 5, written by Ron Lacobelius and Robert Brian Hitch. And this is set in the future where Ultron has taken over and there are only a few heroes left. In this issue, they implement their second part of the plan, which involves time travel. Because that's how you fix all your problems these days, just time travel. This event continues to succeed by not sucking. It's actually a decent story, it keeps you interested. Some have said the plot's going too slow, and that's only half true. It could be moving at a better pace, but it's not a standstill as, let's say, Avengers vs. X-Men was. It's still a pricey comic, so I can recommend that you put it on your pull list. It can be, it's not a must-have, but... If it ends up going well, I would recommend you get it on trade. Only if it ends up well. So we'll see if Ben just doesn't mess it up. I hope the story is going somewhere and I rate this issue 4 out of 5. And finally, Batman and Robin issue 19. Written by Peter J. Tomasi and Arba Pat Gleason. And this is the issue Carrie Kelly makes her debut. But the real story is Bruce is not dealing with the loss of Damien well. And he does something rather morbid. So Bruce has never dealt with loss well. And what he tries to do to get Damien back is rather dark. I think he's going too far with it. And Carrie Kelly, who I love, is one of my favorite Robins of all time, just served no purpose in the story. It wasn't the right place or time to introduce her. I would love to see more of her, but just not right now. Not only that, she was drawn funny. It looked like she had no nose, just like a flat nose. I rate this issue 3.5 out of 5. So that's it for me. Remember to check us out on Facebook. Subscribe to us, because if not, we don't know you like us. How do we know unless you do it? So go on and do it. Check out the other geeks at Stay Geeky.